Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about the carbapenem antibiotics. The carbapenem antibiotics all end in penem, so they all have the suffix penem, which makes them easy to identify. So some of the examples of carbapenems include imipenem, miropenem, and ertapenem. So again, imipenem, miropenem, and the newer carbapenem known as ertapenem. They are all beta-lactam antibiotics like penicillins. However, they're only used parenterally, so we only use them in IV form. They are distributed very well and they can penetrate into the blood-brain barrier. So because they are used only parenterally, we're going to use them in hospitalized patients. So what are some of the bacterial targets for the carbapenems? The carbapenems have an extremely broad spectrum of activity, so you're only going to use them in severe or serious infections. They have a very broad spectrum of activity because they are so stable against cleavage from many beta-lactamases and the ESBL or extended spectrum beta-lactamase bacteria. So what this means is that a lot of the bacteria that have actually developed resistance to some of the other penicillins don't have resistance to the carbapenems, although this is changing in recent times. For the most part, you're going to use carbapenems to cover a broader spectrum of gram negatives, so gram negative aerobes in particular. These include the Enterobacteriaceae, Klebsiella, and Pseudomonas. So when you're using a carbapenem, you're essentially covering a wide swath of gram-negative bacteria. In particular, you're covering for Pseudomonas. It can also cover Neisseria as well. The carbapenems also have activity against gram-positive cocci. Generally speaking, they can have activity against Streptococcus pneumoniae, and you're going to use the carbapenems for strep pneumonia when there is a strain of strep pneumonia that is resistant to other types of penicillins or other types of antibiotics. So generally, beta-lactamase producing strep pneumonia. The carbapenems are also useful for some anaerobes as well. So as you can see, they have a very broad spectrum of activity. So what can be actually easier is to remember what they're not effective against. So the carbapenems are not effective against Enterococcus faecium, Burkholderia cepacea, and MRSA. So very important, again, carbapenems, good for gram-negative coverage, good for covering Pseudomonas, not good for covering the following Enterococcus faecium, Burkholderia, Cepatia, and specifically MRSA. So if there's a suspicion of MRSA, don't use carbapenems. So again, as we mentioned before, they have such a broad spectrum of activity that they're only going to be used in serious infections, generally infections by resistant organisms, as we mentioned before, beta-lactamase, producing strep pneumonia. They're also more likely to be used in infections by multiple organisms. Also for individuals with febrile neutropenia, so, so usually cancer patients receiving chemotherapy that have dropped their neutrophil count very low and that come in with a fever, we're generally going to put them on a carbapenem. Also, some hospital-acquired pneumonia may also be covered with a carbapenem. And I want to take this opportunity to talk about the newer carbapenem known as ertapenem. And ertapenem is a newer carbapenem that has narrower spectrum of activity. So sometimes we can actually switch from a very broad spectrum carbapenem to actually a very or a more narrow spectrum carbapenem like ertapenem. Ertapenem has good spectrum of activity, but has less activity against Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter, and some gram positives like Enterococci and Strep pneumonia. So specifically, what I want you to remember about Ertapenem itself is that it's it has 
is not good and has very little activity against Pseudomonas. So if you're really trying to cover Pseudomonas, don't use Erdipenem, use another Carbapenem. But if you're trying to narrow the spectrum of treatment and you're not worried about Pseudomonas, you can switch to Erdipenem. So how does the Carbapenems work? What are their mechanism of action? The Carbapenems, like other penicillins and other beta-lactam antibiotics inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis. And they do this by inhibiting the final transpeptidation step in peptidoglycan synthesis. They do this by binding to multiple penicillin binding proteins or PPPs, which are the enzymes actually involved in formation of peptidoglycan. So what happens is a carbapenem like imipenem will bind to a penicillin binding protein, which are actually the enzymes involved in formation of peptidoglycan. It'll bind to a penicillin binding protein, inhibiting that protein, inhibiting the, the bacteria from actually producing a peptidoglycan cell wall. It'll have essentially a defective cell wall, which will actually cause lysis of the bacteria, so bacterial lysis. That's how the carbapenems work, it's similar or actually the same as the other penicillins. And while we're here, I want to quickly talk about antibiotic resistance to the carbapenems. And this is a growing issue where more and more bacteria are developing carbapenemase enzymes or beta-lactamases that are able to hydrolyze carbapenems. These can include some metallo-beta-lactamases like New Delhi metallo-beta-lactamase, which is able to actually degrade the carbapenem essentially reducing its activity or essentially even making it useless. So I just want to quickly discuss that. So what are some of the adverse reactions to the carbapenems? These include the most common, which are the gastrointestinal symptoms, such as diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. Some other adverse reactions to the carbapenems include cardiovascular uh, side effects like edema. There's also neurological side effects like headache and altered mental status dermatologic issues like rash and puritis, and hematologic adverse reactions like anemia, thrombocytopenia, and neutropenia. Anyways, guys, hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a lesson on the carbapenems. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Also, please check out my other antibiotic lessons in my infectious disease playlist. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.